but it's so expensive. Part of my phone swap challenge with TK, I took a little time to shoot some of my samples for a camera deep dive, but I didn't quite land all of my favorite test setups. Still, enough, I feel pretty good about making this a camera deep dive light edition. It'll be fun. Starting as we always do with the conclusion, Samsung delivers one of the most capable phone cameras of the year. But specific hardware decisions and software choices don't make this phone indomitable. That's an an odd double negative. Samsung promises pro-grade cameras and incredible zoom capabilities. Big claims. The zoom is phenomenal, and I feel content creators will have an easier time using a note to dial in a specific look for their photos and videos. And for mostly auto shooters, Samsung software game is pretty solid. While not as effortless as a Pixel, it's much easier these days to only push shutter button and get juicy, vibrant images ready for sharing on social media. Still, I have some concerns about post-processing, about that software performance, and what this phone does to photos and videos, where it's not difficult to match or best the performance of these cameras for specific applications and spend a lot less. A note should stand as the best of what Samsung can achieve in a product cycle, but that doesn't mean it's automatically the winner in price performance comparisons against the competition. Taking a quick look at the hardware, Samsung is making some interesting choices for a triple camera system. The main sensor is a 108 megapixel nanocell built by Samsung to pixel bin down to a 12 megapixel output. It's a big honking slab of sensor. Where I incorrectly labeled the main camera on the OnePlus 8 Pro as the biggest, that title belongs to the Samsung Ultras in the United States. This is not the sensor used for telephoto and zooming, which makes things a little confusing looking at Samsung's product line between the Galaxy S20, the Galaxy S20 Ultra, the Note 20, the Note 20 Ultra. The bigger megapixels can sometimes be used for zooming. That's not the case here. Where the Note is no longer the crown jewel, everything in the kitchen sink device, Samsung has backed off the megapixel count for the telephoto, using a smaller, more traditional 12 megapixel shooter paired with a periscoping lens element. There is a true five times optical zoom, and then cropping and software takes us into to the 50 times zoom from there. Rounding out the trio, we have a fixed focus 12 megapixel ultra wide shooting from a decently sized sensor, similar in size to what we used to see as the main camera on phones like the Galaxy S9. The selfie shooter also sees a resolution step back from the S20 Ultra, landing a 10 megapixel one third inch sensor instead of the slightly larger pixel binning sensor from the S20 Ultra. Ultimately, Samsung is making more hardware adjustments and compromises on the note. A few of these might actually help overall quality of life. Still, we can be sure that adding the S Pen to the phone likely contributes to costs, where Samsung can balance those costs whittling back on a few camera features. But of course, we know that reviewing a camera is more than just counting all the megapixels and going out to your front porch to shoot a, a handful of HDR photos to show off the heavy-handed vibrance and juicy colors for your Instagram food shots. There is a lot of ground to cover, so buckle up, folks. I'm gonna try and move pretty quick. All right, that was still a lot of talking. I, I didn't get all the samples that I thought I needed, but we should probably wrap this up. Where's that leave us with the cameras on the Note 20 Ultra? Zoom, do you need zoom? The Ultras have some solid zoom. Otherwise, 
I can't say there are many victories afforded this higher price tag. Everything here is good and competitive, but a note should be about pushing this generation of tech to its limits. And I just don't have that feeling with the Note 20 Ultra. First off, because Samsung at least tried to push those limits farther with the S20 Ultra, whether or not that phone was completely successful. You can immediately miss me with commentary about auto performance or average consumers. The streamlined layout and performance of a Pixel wins every time for the easiest and most effortless, I should only have to push a shutter button to get a good point and shoot image. Average consumers buy average phones. So it's really gonna depend on what kind of photography or video you're into. If I wanted a more cinematic look, shooting and grading the HDR from a Sony would probably be my jam. And I know I'd get better autofocus on an Xperia. For the sensor size superiority, how this sensor is used doesn't seem to deliver much advantage over the hardware in the OnePlus 8 Pro. And I kind of like daylight HDR photos better from OnePlus this year, especially after a couple updates that helped improve OP camera performance over those early embargo reviews. Most of these individual fights will probably side with the Note 20 Ultra over my precious LG V60, but performance on the V60 gets us incredibly close to what the Note 20 can achieve, is a little nicer and more fluid to use in the camera viewfinder, isn't as destructively vibrant for HDR, and full MSRP to full MSRP comes in $500 cheaper than the Note depending on your carrier. It really does come down to the Periscope telephoto zoom. A OnePlus 8 Pro has a better ultra-wide with autofocus which can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second. A Sony has better slow-mo and some crazy cinematic features like programmable rack focus. A Wing has a super fun built-in gimbal mode, and a Pixel is just plain easier to use. There are no winners and losers. A Samsung label, even a Note label, doesn't mean this is the bestest camera. All cameras are a collection of pros and cons. The Note does most things very well, but you're gonna pay top dollar for the phone, and depending on what you like to shoot, or how you like to shoot, you might get better performance for less. But that zoom, that zoom is pretty nifty. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. Supporting your favorite content creators has never been more critical than it is today. So I really do appreciate all of you who do. Check out the links below my videos. Maybe you hit up my merch store. That kind of stuff really does help keep production running on this channel. You can also check out the support page on somegadgetguy.com for a current list of all of my affiliates and partnerships, or you might consider joining the list of names currently scrolling by on your screen. That's a community of super cool tech pals. They're basically the best people on the web. And they also get full access to my in-depth camera deep dive and audio deep dive reviews. They're super cool people, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next review.